Hello, Theory Scholars. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to identify and construct compound intervals. So first off, what is a compound interval? So a compound interval is any interval that's greater than an octave. So on the bottom staff here, I have a number of examples of compound intervals. And probably the easiest way to construct them and to identify them is to think about each of these intervals is to, to reduce the octave out of the interval and think about them as their simple variants. So for each of the intervals below, I've got their simple versions above. So I imagine, for instance, if I take this interval here, um, the ninth, and I subtract the octave out of the interval. So I imagine sort of moving this D down here so that it looks like this. We can think of a major ninth really as being a major second plus an octave, right? Same thing here, I take a major 10th and I imagine reducing the octave out. I imagine moving that E down so that it looks like this. I can think about the major 10th really as being a major third plus an octave. So one thing you notice between each of the, the compounds and the simple variants, if I reduce them out, is that the qualities are all the same. So if it's a major interval, um, when, it's a com when it's a simple interval, it's major when it's compound. If it's perfect, then the compound version is also going to be perfect. And this also applies to diminished and augmented intervals. The quality is always going to be exactly the same. So when you reduce it, you look at the quality and that's what determines it for the compound interval. Another thing you might notice when we've got them all laid out like this is that for each of the simple intervals and the compound intervals, the relationship between the numbers, the size of the interval, is seven. So if I add seven to any of the simple versions, I end up with the compound version. So two plus seven is nine, three plus seven is 10, and so forth, right? And that's really helpful because that means that, for instance, if I give you an interval, and like a, let's say a major 13th, and I ask you to spell it, well, we can just think of, well, a 13th is gonna be 13 minus seven, six. A 13th then is gonna be an octave plus a major sixth. I just have to subtract seven from the number. So I'm gonna keep the quality the same, and then I just add seven to get the compound version. Okay, let's try another one. So imagine instead I say, well, why don't you build for me a diminished 11th? So to determine what the simple interval would be, I'd take 11 minus seven, which would be, which would be four. Therefore, a diminished 11th equals an octave plus a diminished fourth, right? Keeping the quality exactly the same. Make sense? I can also, I can go the other way around instead. I could say, well, what is the compound version of a minor, um, of a minor third? And to find the compound version, I just need to take three plus seven then, which would be 10. So it would be a minor 10th. All right, so let's try applying this. So I've got a couple cases up here on the top. I've got some compound intervals that we're going to practice identifying. So to do this, we're gonna reduce the octave out of the interval. So I'm gonna take this A here and I'm just gonna scoot it down an octave below and figure out what the simple version of the interval is first. So from F up to A is a major third, right? Okay, so the compound version then is gonna be three plus seven, which would be 10. Therefore, this is a major 10th. Keep the quality the same, add seven. Okay, let's try another one. So I'm gonna move this G-sharp down an octave, so it would be right here. So D up to G-sharp, well, D to G is a perfect fourth, right? So D to G-sharp would be a augmented fourth, yes? Okay, so augmented fourth, so the compound version of that would be four plus seven equals 11. So that means that this is a augmented 11th. All right, let's try one more. Okay, A flat, I'm gonna move it down the octave. So let's see here, C up to A flat. Well, C up to A, that would be a major sixth, right? So C to A flat would be a minor sixth. Okay, so the simple version is a minor six. Six plus seven equals 13. Therefore, what I've got here then is a minor, keep the quality the same, 13th. Make sense? Okay, so now let's try it the other way around. So now in this case, I'm given a perfect interval. I'm, I'm given a, a perfect 12, the compound interval, and I need to construct it. So I'm gonna start by reducing this to a simple version and just spell that interval and add an octave, right? So a perfect 12 is the same thing as a 12 minus seven is five. 
So a perfect twelfth really then is a perfect fifth plus an octave. So what's a perfect fifth above F? Well, that would be, let's see, that would be a C. And then if I want, I need to add an octave to that, so I need to move this C up. So that would be my, that'd be my interval, perfect twelfth. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so minor fourteenth. So what is the simple version of that? Well, okay, so 14 minus 7 equals 7. So a minor 14th then is actually a minor 7th plus an octave, right? So, okay, so what's a minor 7th above E flat? Well, okay, a major 7th above E flat would be D, right? So that means a minor 7th would be D flat, and then I need to add an octave to it, right? So D flat up here. There it is. One more. One more real quick one. Okay, so minor ninth. So a minor ninth is a nine minus seven equals two. It's the same as a minor second plus an octave. So what's a minor second above B? It'd be a C, right? And then an octave above that would be the C. All right, there it is. <laughs> so seven is the trick, right? You're either going to add it or you're going to subtract seven. Make sure you keep the quality the same. All right, good luck with compound interval construction. <laughs>